Hi everyone, welcome back to the Stitches and Scribbles channel. My name is Erin and welcome to day two of Vlogmas. So you're seeing this December 2nd, but for me it is November 25th, so the Saturday after Thanksgiving, also known as Small Business Saturday. So I have lots of shopping plans for today, but I wanted to show you what I got up to last night in terms of crafting. So my husband and I ended up watching the first two Harry Potter movies. Um, which meant I had a lot of crafting time done. So I did finish the prayer shawl that I was working on. I do still need to weave in the ends, but there aren't that many. This was just knit in plain garter stitch with a single crochet border just to give it some structure. And both of these yarns are from Hobby Lobby. It's the I Love This Yarn brand. The trim on the edge is just the plain cream color. And I believe the color in the middle was called ballet slippers or dance slippers or something like that. Um, but I no longer have the tags. So I don't remember the exact color names. But I finished that. And then I decided to cast on a project and quickly realized that this was not great movie watching knitting. So this is going to be a mosaic knit scarf or cowl depending on how much yarn I end up using and the chart for it is actually a snowflake dishcloth. So all I did and I can um, link the pattern for it below so that you can see what I did but um, what I did is I used the dishcloth doubled the number of stitches and I'm knitting it stockinette in the round instead of the like alternating stockinette and garter stitches that are in the pattern. So you can see in the middle there, that is like the bottom spoke of the snowflake. Um, didn't get very far in it. And this is yarn that I purchased last year. Unfortunately, I cannot find the ball band for it, but it is a DK weight in this kind of deep green and this really, really pale green, which is why I thought it would work well with a snowman, not snowman, a snowflake motif. I am planning on alternating it with another mosaic knit pattern where the primary color is the lighter color so that I'm using my yarn evenly throughout and I won't run out of the dark green before I run out of the light green. So the plan is to do like one full chart of the snowflake, then do like a polka dots pattern where the background is the light green color and then do another sn snowflake chart and so on. Um, until I can't go anymore. <laughs> so that's kind of the plan for this project, um, but because it requires a chart and a lot of attention, it was not a great movie watching project, which meant that I kind of switched to just playing on my phone. I did start another prayer shell, but I'll show you that another time. It's just a corner to corner pattern, nothing, nothing super fancy. Um, but for, actually before we do shopping today, Let's do our advent calendar. So um, again, even though it's November 25th, I'm opening, opening it based on what day it is for you when you're seeing the video, which means that it is time for day two. So we'll just pull out the little drawer. This thing is so heavy, so I'm excited that it will get less heavy as we continue. I'm actually going to put it on the floor. That might be a better place for it. So I have an orange candle today. This one is caramel and ginger cookie and definitely smells like that. The ginger is almost making me think it smells like orange but I think it's just that like tanginess of the scent combined with what color the little jar is. But this is super cute. I will definitely be burning this later and adding it to my candle collection. I did burn the one from day one quite a bit yesterday while I was decorating um, but there's actually still like about half of it left so they definitely last a good probably four or five hours total which I was impressed with. But the plan for today <clears throat> is to hit up some small businesses and also some like craft stores and also the grocery store because we need to pick up a few things. Um, on my list is one new place I've never been to before and um, it's actually a bead store that's 
kind of near me. We were driving to something else like a month or two ago and I just happened to see it out of the corner of my eye but decided to save it for today. So that place is called Midwest Beads and I just looked up like what subdivision, not subdivision, what um, like suburb of Milwaukee it's in but I don't remember what the answer was. So I think that one's going to be first on the list. Then I have a thrift store that I want to go to. Um, it's the St. Mary's thrift store in Elm Grove. Um, actually kind of a weird reason for that. So I, because I'm now like sort of full time at the school that I'm working with, um, I get to do all of the like holiday staff events. And the staff does both a white elephant gift exchange and a secret Santa gift exchange. So the white elephant gift exchange is actually first. And I did ask another coworker like, what's the vibe for the white elephant gift? Because sometimes people give like nice things or it's all ornaments and sometimes it's um, unhinged to put it mildly. And it, it seems like we're more on the unhinged side of the spectrum for this one. So um, I honestly wanted to go to St. Mary's just to see if I can find anything like kind of weird. I do have a backup idea um, which is why craft stores are also on this list. Not that I need another project, but it was a small project, so I figured it was okay. And that's, like, over two weeks away at this point, so I think I can handle it by then. Um, my backup plan is to crochet an amigurumi that... You know what? I'm not even going to tell you what it is. If I end up making it, I'll show it to you. But if not, it doesn't matter, so I won't bore you with the details. Um, so after St. Mary's there's also a Goodwill kind of in the general location that I'll be at today. Um, so same idea for Goodwill is to look for just weird things that can be white elephant gift items. Then I'm going to go to Joanne and Michael's um, to pick up yarn for that amigurumi if I don't find a white elephant worthy item from either of the thrift stores. But also I have a friend who asked if I would make a set of cotton dishcloths for her mom and her mom likes jewel tone colors so I wanted to pick up a set of yarn for those. Those will also be tutorials on my channel but probably not um, until at least January if not later. Um, and then finally I will be going to Trader Joe's to pick up some grocery items because even though we're having a lot of meals with family this weekend and into next week, um, I did realize I do still need things to bring to lunch with me. So that is kind of the plan for the day. Um, if I get back early enough, I'm hoping that I can cast on another project because clearly the ones that I have going are not enough. But I would really like to cast on my Christmas socks, so hopefully when I get back, I can do that. All right, I just finished up at Midwest Feeds and I almost didn't go in because from the outside it looks so much like it's just a jewelry store. But I went in, I found some really cool stuff, so I'm excited to show you the full haul when I get home. But also I forgot to say this morning that one of my local yarn stores is on my list, maybe two if I can squeeze it in. So we're actually heading to Cream City Yarns next. All right, I just finished at Cream City Yarns. I'm now actually in the thrift store parking lot. Um, I just wanted to briefly explain why I'm not filming inside of the store locations. The bead store and um, the yarn store are both places where even on a normal day, it's kind of like you make one wrong move and you knock stuff over. So I was trying to really be um, like cognizant of my movement throughout the store in both places especially the bead store because that was like if you send a tray flying like someone's going to be sorting beads for hours um but then on top of that there were other people in both stores especially the yarn store there were a lot of people in there and i didn't really want to like be that person who's filming in a public space and making people uncomfortable. So um, I already am calling it now for the thrift store because there's a lot of cars in the parking lot and it is also that kind of place where like every square inch of space is used for things. Um, so I probably won't film inside the store but I did get some 
good things at Cream City Yarns that I'm really excited about. Um, but I figured we'll just do like a full haul at the end of the day when I get home. Okay, so we didn't find anything at Goodwill. There was nothing quite unhinged enough to warrant purchasing. But I did want to give kind of a sneak peek of something I got at the other thrift store. I showed the bag in one of the previous clips. But somebody had donated a bag of Noro. I think it's called Noro. Yeah, Noro yarn. Which, according to the, the label that's in there, is normally... Where was it? is normally $42 a skein. I got this whole bag for $12.50, so it's at least two full skeins of the pink and orange, plus this little granny square that somebody was working on, and this ball, which those two together might be another full skein. And then there's a little skein of this like teal, blue, black color as well. So I have no idea what I'm gonna make with that, but I am super excited to try it. We're now heading into Joann's. I might try to get a clip inside of the store, um, but it depends on how many people are in there and we're just looking for some fun cotton yarn to make some, what was I making with this? Dishcloths, dishcloths for my friend's mom. Okay, I ended up doing both Michael's and Joann. They were both way too crowded <laughs> for me to film, which is totally fine. Um, I did get my cotton yarn at Joann that I was looking for and the thing that, the other thing I was looking for was those um, plastic ornaments that you can like fill with stuff um, and I needed another container of them and Joanne didn't have them but I'm glad I then went and checked my list before going to Michael's because I forgot that I need a new bullet journal for 2024 and I get mine from Michael's specifically and they happen to have the color that I wanted. I thought I was going to have to place an online order to get it but I'm glad I checked. So all I've got left is groceries which I'm not definitely not going to take the camera in for um and I'll see you at home for a haul okay I figured we should do a complete haul to show you everything that I got um I kind of I'm gonna have to go in reverse order of where I went to stores just because of how things are in the bag but the last stop I made was actually to Michael's and at Michael's, I got some of these disc ornaments, the like clear kind. It's just gonna look shiny on camera. Um, and I also got my bullet journal for 2024. Um, the ornaments were on sale for 60% off because it's Black Friday weekend. But the reason why I got them is because I was actually doing some craft fair prep because I had a different box of these that I've been working on for I think a couple years at this point because I tried doing the glitter fill ornaments and I tried doing Cricut ornaments and none of them really worked for me. But this year I made little crocheted ones just using scrap yarn and I'm almost done with the existing box I had but I already had my mom tell me that she wants a couple for not gifts for this year but gifts for next year. And I have a couple that I want to make as hostess gifts, so I knew I needed another container of the ornaments. Feels a little silly after trying so hard to finish off the previous one, but I, like, I'm going to use them now, so <laughs> might as well just get another one, especially when it's 60% off. And then the bullet journal I use are these Artist Loft notebooks, the ones with the dotted pages. And in the past, I have gotten this in both the, like, brown leather and the mint colorways. Um, and I was really glad that they had this, like, light brown taupe because it was the color that I wanted for this year. Um, I kind of want to do not an all-neutral bullet journal, but, like, a very earth-toned, lots of, like, browns and grays and olive greens for my theme for this year. Um, but I'm not sure how that's going to look yet with the, like, markers and such that I have, so... I decided to go with a very neutral color um, in order to go with that theme. This year, so 2023, I did mostly pastels in the mint one, um, and I did really like how that turned out, 
but I want something different for next year. Next up was my thrift store. Nope. Let's do the Joann's yarn first. <laughs> Somehow that sank to the bottom of the bag, but I can see it, so we'll get it out. Um, I picked four colors of cotton yarn. This is all the Lily Sugar and Cream. The first one I got is called Garden Party. It's some very pretty pinks and purples, mostly purple. I guess that's just purple. It's got kind of that like fuchsia magenta tone in there too. Um, the next one I got is called Psychedelic. Some very bright tones in there. Pink, green, yellow, blue, some teal, and some like blue violet almost that like really deep royal blue then the next one I got is coral seas ombre so this one has coral teal light blue light blue and like a peach tone in there and then the last one I got is crown jewels ombre so this has purples and teals in it and those will be for the washcloth set that I'm making for my friend's mom Again, it will be tutorials, but those tutorials won't happen until probably January, um, just because of all the stuff that I have scheduled out. But I went ahead and got the yarn because I was hoping it would be on sale. It wasn't, um, but that's okay. I figured might as well pick it up anyway, since I don't know when I will next be going to Joanne. Um, up next would be my thrift store yarn. So I already showed you this in the car, but it's a bag of Noro yarn in a couple different colorways. It looks like it's mostly this pink and orange colorway. The labels are in there, but it's just a color number. So it's color number eight and it doesn't have a color name for it. But yeah, this is the Noro Geishi yarn, G-E-S-H-I. This is what it looks like in the ball, and there's two skeins that are still in the cake. So it's a lot of shades of orange with some pink and some like golden yellow in there. And then there is one small ball of this like blue colorway. So that was definitely a good find because um, it said right on the yarn label for the Naro that it is normally $42 a ball so the fact that I got that whole bag for $12.50 is really impressive and the lady who was checking out the yarn for me agreed <laughs> she knew that it was expensive yarn so I was really excited to find that. I also got a bag of Patton's sock wool and this whole bag was $8 so it looks like I've got that one still has the person's receipt in there. That's kind of funny. Um, there's one skein of Cadet Colors, which is like navy and gray. Looks like it hasn't actually been used. It just got kind of messed up in the ball band. And then there's a bunch of the same color. So it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six total of see what the color name is on that one because it's been taped. This one's called Cascade Colors. And this is the Patton's Croy Socks FX. Both of these are. It just looks like there are two different labels on there. But um, I figured those would be good for making lots of socks <laughs> or like matching sets of socks or like a sock and a scarf that match or like a Musselburg hat. Um, I thought that there were a lot of good options for that. Up next is my Cream City Yarns stuff. So what I originally went in for was to get a couple more pairs of circular sock needles. So these are the Chowgu Red Lace Circular 60 centimeter size one and that's typically what I use for socks. I just wanted a couple other pairs because I've been really itching to like cast on more socks and um, yeah, having extra pairs would 
help with that. It will also enable me to continue making socks. Um, I also, <laughs> I got some yarn, of course. Um, one of these yarn things was sort of planned, the other one wasn't. So for 2024, my goal is to get really good at knitting socks. I really want to practice with the ultimate goal being that I am able to make socks as Christmas gifts next year. But I decided it would be fun to have a theme for my sock practice for the year. I decided on Taylor Swift eras for my socks. So I have a couple things in stash that work for some of the eras that I'm going to go through, but I have it planned out so that I'm making a pair of socks every month. Obviously there are only 10 Taylor Swift eras, but I'm hoping that maybe we'll get a new album announcement before then, or um, I'll do like Christmas Tree Farm inspired socks um, to add another one in there. Who knows? But I found the most perfect yarn to be my lover socks. Look at how pretty that is. It definitely has more colors in it than the album. It's like pink, blue, some lavender, a little bit of yellow, but it has that like cloudy, like just beautiful pastels to it. I can't even talk. It's so pretty. Um, this is from Stitch, St Stitch Stuff Yarn, um, which is not a yarn company I'd heard of before. And this colorway is called Sunset Shimmer and it's on their sock stuff base. There's a, a lot of S's and SH's here and I'm having to say things very slowly. It is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, um, 100 grams, 462 yards. I love this. I also love that there's like some deeper tones kind of hidden in there. There's some speckling. Um, absolutely perfect yarn for that project. I wasn't necessarily shopping for my Taylor Swift yarn today, but when I saw that colorway, I knew I just had to get it. The other thing I got was actually from their clearance section. So this was, it's a bunch of Emma's yarn minis. And originally this set of minis was priced at $50 and it was on sale for $35. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven minis on here. And on the little picture on the tag was a cowl pattern. Um, so it's for a specific cowl. I don't think I'm going to be making that one, but I did really like the colorways um, because they are sort of blue and gold a little bit with a lot of gray in there. And my school that I'm working with is blue and gold. So I figured having another like blue and gold cowl option or scarf or whatever I end up making with this um, would be good. But these are all Emma's yarn. So this colorway, the kind of tannish brown, is called Wish You Were Beer. Very appropriate for Wisconsin. Um, this, like, blue, orange, teal, white color is called In Your Dreams. I love the speckling on this. This one that has, like, very similar colors, it's just heavier on the blues, is called Yarn Husband. I love these color names. Um, this one is a pretty bright, vibrant yellow, and it's called Milwaukee. So maybe this was a, a special set for Cream City Yarns. I don't know. Um, this one also has some blues and creams in it, and it's called Go Brewers. So another Milwaukee thing. Um, this one is mostly white with, like, speckles of the other colors in it, and it's called Orbit. And the last one is mostly white with just some blues in it, and it's called Dewdrop. So a really pretty set, and it must be a special Milwaukee set with the Brewers colorway, the Beer colorway, um, and the Milwaukee colorway in there. So I didn't even notice that when I picked this up, but that is very fun that they're Milwaukee themed. Um, that's all I got from Cream City Yarnery. So my last little bag in here was from Midwest Beads. They were so nice while I was in there. Um, and I actually need to follow them on Facebook because they had a deal going where they threw in a free kit 
if you followed them on Facebook, so I need to remember to do it. But the free kit was for these Golden Goodness earrings. So here's what the little picture is. And it's like amber beads. Amber and a little bit of blue. But those were so pretty and so fun that they were free. But I need to actually follow them on Facebook. Um, I will take care of that. I made sure to get their card. And I also got a kit I picked myself. This is for the Madras bracelet. And it's a very intricate beaded bracelet. Um, it has all the beads, the directions, everything right in there. I just really liked all the jewel tones that were on here. And then I got some other fun things that a lot of them I had never seen before. And I'm going to have to take them all out of this little tiny bag in order to show you. Um, first thing on here was not actually that exciting. I got a chain to replace a chain on a different necklace that I broke. Of course it has gotten tangled in with some other things. There we go. But a nice long silver chain. This is actually going to be for my um, essential oils necklace that I tend to wear a lot because I broke the chain for that and haven't gotten it fixed yet. The next thing I got is actually kind of it wasn't really a kit, but they were put out together, like intended to be used together. But it was beads and rings to make a fidget necklace. So the way this works, you start with this little ring, which has a hole going through it, like horizontally, right through there. And you put the bead in with a pin so that it like spins on the inside and you can roll it between your fingers. So I got this like jade green bead and then I got another set with a white bead. So I will be making those soon. The next piece I got is a little charm that can hold a bead and because of how it's structured you can actually take the beads off and on which makes it interchangeable. But it's this little spiral pendant piece and you would just stretch the bottom and pop the bead on there and then pop it closed again and I thought that was just very neat to have something interchangeable and the last thing I got from there are these earring wires and what I liked about them was first of all I think they'd be super cute worn on their own I'm hoping that you'll be able to see that on camera because they're teeny um, you can just pop it in your ear like you would a typical French hook but because there's nothing attached to it, you can put little charms on there that would hang from the bottom. And they're, since they're not permanently attached, you can swap them out, which I thought was very fun. So I'm glad I picked those up. But that's it for the haul for today. Um, I am actually not going to start with any of these <laughs> new yarns right now. I do really want to cast on my Christmas socks. So I think I'm going to switch over to that. And... That'll be the plan for the next however long I have until it's time to start making dinner. Okay, I got about this far on my sock, so I did 10 rows of 1x1 one one ribbing, and I'm up to like 21 rows of stockinette. I'm just doing plain vanilla socks for this. I am using the, um, I forget what it's called actually, I should open it up. Um, it is a, oh, it's called the SOS Basic Sock by Summer Lee Designs. There's tutorials for it on YouTube. Um, I did change the ribbing because the ribbing was originally two by one ribbing and I just made it one by one instead and I'm following the directions for her medium size. Um, yes, that's it. I'm <laughs> like checking the directions. But I'm going to keep going with those probably tonight. And I think I'm going to end the vlog here because we're probably just going to watch another Harry Potter movie tonight. Um, and 
it would be nice to put the camera away <laughs> for now. Plus, I don't think we'll be doing anything that fascinating. Um, but I'll fill you in on what movie we did decide to watch tomorrow. Thank you again for watching. If you want to follow me here on YouTube, hit that subscribe button down below so you can be notified of all my crafty content. And if you would like to see what I do on other social media platforms, make sure that you check the description box below for that information. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for our next day of Vlogmas. Bye, everyone.